So, yeah, as I said before in my uh, second update video, that this is gonna be a little off the cuffs. I might, you know, get into some notes, but in the end, it's really just me talking about a character I really like and why I feel like this character is a little bit underappreciated. And I decided to start with Michael because, yeah, there are a lot of story potential with this character and DC has done nothing with him. Let me start about, yeah, Michael's beginning. Michael started off as a cop in the GCPD and, uh, yeah, life did not go well for him. I mean, besides, you know, his childhood and uh, the failed sports career and his military background, yeah, Michael's family fell apart because, yeah, first of all, his three-year-old son was horribly killed in an accident, his wife, uh, not long after, killed herself, and then his two brothers were uh, slaughtered in a frickin' satanic cult. Yeah, he was going through some hell, and uh, it was being noticed by the GCPD, but not in the way you think. You see, the GCPD at that time was being infiltrated by a group called the Black Glove, and their leader, Dr. Hurt, decided, you know what, let's put him in our special program, that being the Three Ghosts of Batman. The Three Ghosts of Batman being these cops who in the GCPD were very unstable, but were selected to become the next Batman if anything happens to him. Huh. Yeah, so we had the three Batman, the first being Bat-Cop, who shot Joker in the face, don't worry, he's fine. Then we have Bat-Bane, who was essentially the main antagonist of the second half of the Son of Batman storyline. And then we have Michael. Michael went by the code name Bat-Devil, mostly because, yeah, he thought he was a spawn of hell and that he was destined to cause the apocalypse. And uh, with the design that he was given, yeah, he was definitely a... Uh, Definitely one help that he was embracing that concept. Yeah, Michael went batshit crazy, no pun intended, and uh, attempted to kill Batman and was very loyal to the Black Love, at least until the end of Batman R.I.P., where he started wandering around. It wasn't until uh, he encountered his, uh, his sister-in-law, Jenny, who would later become his love interest, it's a whole thing, and he would start to regain bits with Sandy until he was finally found by the Order of Purity. Now, the Order of Purity is a sister group of the Order of St. Dumas. To simply say it, the Order of St. Dumas is a secret organization that was founded by Knights of the Crusade and are very superstitious, uh, with their top agent being the, given the codename of Azriel. The last one being Jean-Paul Valley, who died, though his death wasn't really confirmed until Blackest Night when they showed him as a Black Lantern, which apparently was the artist's favorite, you know, design, but whatever. I'm Michael's found by this group, and they end up kind of helping him regain his sanity, and eventually he even gains new faith, and decides to dawn on the mantle of Azriel. Though, unlike Jean-Paul Valley, uh, who went through training via, you know, really intense hypnosis, yeah, Michael already had the military training to handle it, and also, unlike Jean-Paul, who, though, was, uh, you know, based in the ways of, you know, of, you know, holiness, religion, and uh, dealing with, like, angels and demons, he wasn't really a supernatural character. He mostly dealt with tech. Occasionally, he would um, handle some supernatural objects, but in the case of Michael, yeah, he fully embraced uh, being supernatural, wielding uh, first two swords, the Sword of Sin, a really awesome uh, sword that, you know, will cut down the wicked, but will not harm the innocent. So if someone who has done no sin or really nothing that is truly evil is stabbed with it, it will not kill them. But then we have the Sword of Salvation that doesn't kill anyone. When someone is actually struck with the sword, they will actually uh, go through a purification. Their soul will be purified and absolved of all their sins, though in the process, they will witness every single sin that they have ever committed in the most painful way pro uh, possible. Yeah, it is intense and uh, very trippy. Uh, Michael even learned that firsthand. But yeah, Michael would go through an interesting journey, but once he got his hands on the Suit of Sorrows, well, things got complicated for him. You see, the Suit of Sorrows is this suit of armor, well, chainmail to be more precise, that when you wear it, it will give you great strength and, you know, enhance your abilities, but it will also cost you your mind. And Michael, unfortunately, yeah, he was already broken when he started, and, uh, oh man, it became a struggle afterwards. 
Michael started to question uh, his sanity even more and would go through some insane mind trips until finally he would, uh, you know, accept this mantle of, you know, not just being a vigilante, but also just a full on savior, but doing it in the most extreme way possible, where he was actually going to destroy all of Gotham, believing that would save their souls. And the only people that could stop him would be Batman, Dick Grayson Batman, Selena Kyle, and Tim Drake, who at the time was Red Robin, and I feel like DC should have kept it. Seriously, what the hell is that Drake identity? Seriously, like, really? What was wrong with Red Robin? I actually kind of liked that whole thing. He made that his own, but whatever. I could talk about that situation in a whole other video, in a whole different, you know, segment. But yeah, Michael was willing to destroy the city. And yeah, he almost did. Until uh, it took, uh, you know, Jenny to straight up tell him, Michael, snap the hell out of this. Like, you don't want to do this. And luckily, Michael listened and was able to, you know, prevent doing so. He regained his sanity and realized that this is not the way to, you know, save people. And that, you know, he's not truly being an angel and uh, he leaves. After that, that looked like that was going to be the last we saw of Michael, but he did eventually come back in Batman Inc. Uh, after the New 52 uh, started, which, uh, yeah, thank God. I was actually kind of worried that that character uh, was going to be off. Uh, Michael Lane uh, was found in a cave talking to Bruce Wayne after the death of Damian Wayne. He got better real quick. Yeah, death in the DC Universe is essentially, like, just a power nap, really. Uh, but, yeah, um... Yeah, that would be the last time we see Michael. Um, we would not know whether or not he would show up ever again. And uh, yeah, since Jean-Paul Valley has returned to comics, it doesn't look like he's showing up anytime soon. Uh, at first, I thought maybe he was going to be the new Arkham Knight when they decided to bring that character into canon since... Uh, the Arkham Knight at the time did kind of have this strange holier-than-thou type of feel. Uh, Michael hasn't shown up in a bit, but hopefully they'll do something with him since, yeah, they still haven't covered the fact on whether or not him and Damien's future are the same because, yeah, one thing I uh, forgot to mention, apparently in the future, Michael is destined to go crazy again on the whole Bat-Devil and fight Damien Wayne where it will end with Damien fucking slaughtering him. Like, he will slice up his stomach and then break his neck and then he'll be lit on fire. Yeah. That happens. But, yeah, hopefully they'll do more with him. Uh, I really loved his Azrael run. Uh, I know I didn't really go into too much detail of it, but I do really want you guys to check it for yourself. It's a really good series. Uh... It all begins in uh, Death's Dark Night Hell. It fills you in on his backstory uh, pretty easily. So, yeah, uh, definitely check out his stuff.